I'm happy to be here today with Dr. Cynthia Zano. She's Assistant Professor of Oncology at Johns Hopkins University. She presented the paper, Low Dose Azacytidine and Epigenetic Regulation of Self Renewal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Would you begin by discussing how self renewing cancer stem cells can be successfully inhibited using epigenetics? Yes. Um, we believe that most of the cells in a tumor um, incorporate azacytidine, or I'm going to refer to it as, as aza. Uh, including cancer stem cells. Now, once the azacytidine is incorporated, it um, reverses methylation and thereby reversing gene silencing and causing gene increases in gene expression, which can then signal um, numerous signaling cascades, including um, blockade of cell cycle entry, uh, decreased mitosis, increased apoptosis, increased lineage commitment, um, increased. Um, or altered um, invasion and um, cytoskeletal restructuring. Um, we um, know that stem cells are methylated and that methylation controls their proliferation and their um, biology and that it makes sense that if you alter methylation in a cancer stem cell you may affect its, its biology. And we've actually observed that. We've taken um, primary breast cancer cells from pleural fusions from metastatic breast cancer patients and I've cultured those in suspension um, as mammospheres. We treated those for three days with azacytidine, a very brief, low-dose treatment, and then serially passaged these cells for uh, three weeks, with passaging every week for three weeks. And what we noticed was that um, azacytidine caused these spheres to decrease in number as well as size each week, whereas the mock cells increased in size and number. And this is an assay to kind of test self renewal. So this suggests that azacytidine is, is having some effect on self renewal mechanisms. Um, we've also noticed that stem cell markers, which are commonly looked at, CD44, CD24, aldehyde dehydrogenase, are decreased in these cells. And we've done some array analysis um, of the RNA expression in these cells. We've noticed that very important signaling pathways, such as FOXM1, which feeds into oral kinase and polylike kinase and CHECK1 and 2, for example, um, is uh, decreased by azacytidine. And these are all targets right now that the pharmaceutical industry are very interested in as, as anti-cancer um, targets. We know that um, integrin signaling, um, which feeds into invasion and um, cytoskeletal restructuring, is, is altered by azacytidine. And this is not just in the primary breast cancer cells, but also in breast cancer cell lines, in some AML patient samples, which is um, you know, leukemia lines, um, and some lung cancer lines. So these are, these are common pathways. Um, so th those are the reasons that we suspect that azacytidine is targeting self renewal. Would you describe your research with epigenetic demethylating agents like decitabine and azacytidine and what you're learning about how these drugs work? One thing that we've learned that's, that's quite important is that these drugs work at very low dose. Historically, they were used at much higher micromolar doses and there was a lot of cytotox cytotoxicity observed. But um, the um, hematological um, clinicians started using it in myelodysplastic syndromes and AML at lower concentrations and found it to be much more effective and less toxic. So um, we've taken this um, lower dose and, and applied it to solid tumors. And we're finding that low dose works primarily because it's not killing the cells. So the cells have, a, have an opportunity. They have a, since they're not dead, they have a chance to take up the drug, incorporate it, undergo um, gene expression changes, and reprogramming. Um, we've also noticed that this takes time. Unlike a cytotoxic agent, it doesn't happen two or three days later. It can take weeks to maybe even um, months in some patients to actually see an anti-tumorigenic effect. So the sooner you get into patients, the better, and at low doses. And how can we use this information to personalize epigenetic therapy for breast cancer? So um, currently we have tested about 30 breast cancer cell lines as well as seven patient samples. And we know that the cell lines that are the most sensitive to azacytidine are the ER positive um, breast cancers, followed by the HER2 positive, and then lastly the triple negative breast cancers. The um, patient samples that we've tested are all been luminal breast cancers, and they've responded very well. So um, at this point, you know, in, with our preliminary data, we are curious that uh, the luminal breast cancer lines, ER positive, which actually have more methylation than the triple negatives, may be a bit more sensitive. 
Um, we're very interested in knowing whether azacitidine can re-express um, a gene that's been silenced in a cancer that would then be an attractive target for targeting therapy, for example, estrogen receptor or our retinoic acid receptor. Um, so we're, we're hoping to maybe personalize it in that way to combine azacitidine with a targeted therapy or a chemo sensitization um, protocol. And what are the next steps for this research? The next steps are to predict which of these patients um, will respond. Um, we are currently um, using expression profiles to try to understand, to look at markers and try to understand expression profiles that correlate with response so that we can predict which patients will actually receive therapy as well as to try to understand whether azacitidine can um, sensitize patients to subsequent chemotherapy. So that's, that's something that we've been noticing the patients that have in the lung cancer trial and um, have, once they've received, received azacitidine, they seem to respond very well to subsequent chemotherapy. Now we don't know whether that's just the aza response or whether aza has sensitized the tissue to, to um, you know, other agents. So that's something that we're also looking into and we need to uh, determine um, whether, not just whether it's sensitizing to chemo, but which chemo agent or targeted therapy would work best with azacitidine. You're a cancer survivor yourself. What is it like personally to be working on a disease that you're experiencing firsthand? Well, um, talk about a motivational influence. Um, my research was a bit more basic science oriented prior to my diagnosis, and um, it's now I've now pushed it into a more translational arena. And um, I, of course, am you know very passionate about trying to make a difference in, in therapy and bringing some of these target, these um, therapeutic agents to, um, to women, and, and perhaps myself one day if I recur. Um, there's been good and bad um, as far as being not only a breast cancer researcher but a survivor, in that the good is that um, I know a lot about breast cancer, probably a little too much. Um, and when I was undergoing my chemo, for example, my oncologist and I downloaded um, Dennis Slayman's clinical trial talk from the San Antonio meeting, and we looked through it together, and we decided on a, a, a chemo approach that we would that we both agreed on. Um, I'm privy to a lot of great um, talks and meetings that I go to where people talk about new promising drugs that I often think about. Hmm, you know, that might work for me in the adjuvant setting. Um, the bad side is that, again, I know too much. We talk a lot about mutations and amplifications and gene expression uh, profiles that are a bad prognosis. So I'm thinking, hmm, is that something that my tumor, you know, is that something that I may have? And then, you know, I interact with a lot of clinicians and a lot of people who don't, of course, know I have breast cancer. And um, they may talk to me about a, not knowing how a, my type of cancer is equated with a very bad prognosis. And, you know, that kind of takes your breath away for a couple minutes, and then you just have to kind of move on and, you know, know that it's all just an odds game. But um, I think um, it's knowledge is power. So it's been, it's been very helpful for me to, to be a researcher as well. Dr. Zano, thank you so much. Thank you.